Hello, everybody. Uh, so, I'm Emanuele Tairiol. I've been working on the geospatial stuff uh, since uh, first, first years of uh, 2000, starting with Geo Network, and then continued work on uh, catalog, uh, open source uh, catalog applications such as uh, CCAN, GeoNode, and so on. So, um, today we will talk about the state of GeoNode, but also with an introduction uh, about what GeoNode, GeoNode is. Okay. So I work for GeoSolutions. Uh, we are a company with uh, work on different countries uh, with many engineers and work on mainly on uh, completely on open source pro products, uh, GeoServer, GeoNode, GeoNetwork, and MapStore offer different services. Uh, we strongly support open source, so all, all the products we work on uh, are, are open, uh, all of them on GitHub, and uh, collaborate actively on uh, the different standards organization. So, starting about what is Genode. Uh, Genode uh, is a platform for making it easy to publish geospatial information, layers, documents, and so on. It's uh, made by different uh, pieces, different projects which are uh, mature and, um, and provide them an, a, an easy interface so that also users which are not specialized can upload, publish uh, information and merge them together. So what can GeoNode uh, do? It handles just special data sets, layers, uh, documents, uh, PDF, doc file, uh, whatever, media, video. Then you can combine them uh, to create more complex aggregates, uh, maps made of layers, uh, dashboards, which are maps uh, with different graphs, annotations, and so on, to explain better what a map tries to convey. And uh, geostories, which, are, uh, with which you can create uh, uh, and annotate, annotate, describe uh, geographical situation. Uh, it also has a very granular uh, permission model so that uh, you can uh, give write, view, download permission to each resource uh, according to uh, user group uh, Belonging, um, belonging to um, groups and so on. Also, there are uh, you can edit both metadata and data. Uh, always, if you if the user have uh, permission to do that, uh, metadata can then can be disseminated, published through the CSW protocol, while data are uh, um, distributed through the classical GC protocol, uh, WMS, WFS, the WCS, and so on. Then there is also a full RESTful API for controlling each object inside the, um, inside the catalog and also for run some of the procedures such like um, importing processing layers and so on. So uh, these are the various uh, ways in which that, uh, data can be added to Genode. So you can simply upload uh, local files, and the system automatically will detect which kind of file are them, uh, raster files, uh, vector files, uh, PDF, and so on, and will create some uh, basic metadata for them. Uh, data can also be automatically harvested by remote sources, so you can simply uh, give a WMS link to Genode and it, you can import reference remote, uh, remote services, remote layers, uh, give also other kind of source for data, other Genode system, uh, ArcGIS server, or you can uh, implement custom harvesters in order to import uh, external information, map them into the uh, GeoNode model, import them into the catalog. Uh, also, in, uh, it's uh, in uh, uh, 
uh, in the implementation phase, uh, the, um, a way for uh, handling remote files uh, create, um, in order to embed them uh, in uh, the various gestories, dashboards, and so on. So here, uh, with the, um, uh, the, the basic uploaded information, we can combine them to create uh, the different uh, um, aggregations, so maps, uh, which are, of course, the classical uh, layers uh, with different styling, uh, the geostories and dashboard, which are different aggregates, uh, uh, dashboards usually are more uh, static, uh, uh, using, of course, the dynamic data, data inside, uh, inside the catalog, uh, while just stories is something that you can uh, read, uh, uh, read through. Ge uh, GeoApps are there because they are the generic kind of app that you can, uh, that can be implemented in Geonode and then added as a plugin. All of these kind of resources, data set documents, dashboard jobs, and so on, are then made public, are then um, visible, or for the human through the embedded viewers, or through the REST API, or through the uh, various OGC protocols. As you saw, so, uh, and you can usually uh, let's say for WMS, the WFS, and so on, we have only the layers that are ve uh, vector and so on. About the CSW, since it uh, can publish different kind of um, of metadata, you can choose uh, inside Genode which kind of objects should be uh, exposed, searched, and retrieved. Uh, so. As I told, Geonode is not a single application, but it is made up of uh, different pieces, different uh, fragments of, of software. So the core of Geonode is a web application on Django which uh, uh, glues the different, uh, the different pieces. Uh, for the data part, GeoServer is uh, uh, the engine which serves uh, uh, the various layers. Uh, the GeoNode core is uh, tightly integrated with, uh, uh, with GeoServer in that uh, it automatically publishes layer, uh, edit layers, uh, styles, and so on. So uh, GeoNode at the beginning was uh, implemented as, a, as an easy to use interface to GeoServer and then uh, grown up uh, by including other kind of data, so documents uh, and so on. Map Store is used um, as a map client front end. Quite, it's a quite uh, uh, powerful client in which you can can add different plugin. Uh, and then for all the backend part, uh, PostGIS used for storing both the metadata on the GeoNode side and. Uh, Another different database is shared with GeoServer, uh, where GeoNode will import all the vectorial data in GeoServer we read from them for rendering the various layers. Then there are other ancillary systems, uh, ancillary services such as uh, RabbitMQ, Celery, and so on uh, for running the background uh, services. And then usually uh, when uh, a whole system is put together, there are other services, Nginx, Let's Encrypt, for creating the upper layer of communication the, uh, toward the world. Uh, here I have a big block uh, uh, of the various pieces. I didn't mention PyCSW, which is used as a library inside Genode for, uh, for the CSW protocol. Mm. Genode by itself is an application which is uh, um, quite, uh, um, I, I won't say static, but uh, you may want to customize in some way. Uh, as for much other different projects, uh, you don't want to 
uh, to change the, the code for, for Genode since then, it would be a problem to, for uh, upgrades and so on. It would conflict with the official repository upgrades. So there is a way for customized Genode. There are the Genode project. Uh, it's a template for uh, uh, which creates a Django project in which your application is a, um, in which your application can override most of the um, uh, Geonode stuff. So you can uh, using a Geonode project you can um, improve, enlarge, enlarge the, the model, you can uh, change the user interface, you can change the plugins of Map Store, uh, and you can add whatever you want in the, in the user interface. Uh, always keeping Genode as the, as the basic engine. Uh, the override usually are applied uh, using the, the Django templates mechanism so that you can uh, select which piece uh, you want to um, you want to replace. Uh, of course, uh, you can replace as much as you want. We have cases in which we only kept Geonode as a backend uh, service, and then the whole user interface was implemented from scratch. Um, of course, this is an uh, open source uh, project and. In, this, in the Geonode organization, there are several components. There is the core, there are the various uh, uh, Docker uh, repository, there are other plugins uh, which are uh, uh, in different repositories inside, uh, uh, inside the same organization. Um, contact uh, with, with the community are uh, uh, is done through the usual uh, way, so mailing list, uh, GitHub issues, and so on. Release history is uh, quite long. It was uh, released uh, uh, 14 years ago, and then uh, yes by yes, uh, we added new new feature were added, and uh, uh, upgraded, and so on. Uh, there are a couple of uh, demo instances. One is the stable one, uh, currently at the 4.3.0. Uh, this is the reference uh, instance uh, if you find any error, any issue, so you can reference uh, problems in, uh, uh, directly inside this, uh, uh, this instance. And, and also a development uh, uh, deploy, which is following the all the latest uh, uh, um, developments. What's new in uh, the 430? Uh, in the past version, we kept, uh, we created a version of Map Store and try to integrate uh, Geonode with Map Store with fixed version. From this version on, uh, we'll be keeping Map Store version aligned with the Genode. Uh, this will give us, uh, of course, increased security uh, with all the latest libraries. There is uh, a much deeper integration uh, between Geonode and Map Store. Uh, so most of the new stuff are related on the new feature of Map Store. So there is a 3D support, including 3D tiles and so on. A map catalog, external layers can be added in the maps without adding them in Geonode. So it's a completely, uh, they are added completely at client level with so that external layers uh, will not uh, be will not be searchable in the local uh, journal catalog. Uh, there are application contexts so that uh, we will see it in a few slides. Uh, different maps can have different map store plugins, and so on. Uh, the map viewers, let's say, um, until now. Uh, in Genod, we only had some standard, uh, um, 
some standard plugins. So the list of the layers uh, uh, in the map and the various uh, zoom uh, select get for the get fisher info um, uh, for the get, to call the get fisher info operation and so on. Now what you can do is uh, uh, creating a context. So you can create, uh, you can select a set of uh, plugins of Map Store, and then you can uh, bind this set of plugins uh, to a map. So that uh, if you want, uh, you may remove, for instance, a 3D feature from a map, you can add uh, some processing part, some processing widget for a map and not for other, and so on. Uh, these map viewers, when, when you create a map viewer, you can associate it, it to one or more maps, and the, these map viewers are um, related to a single user. So you can create your template for your maps and use it for the maps you are creating. Um, the option for the three part is, uh, is set by, by default, so if you don't want it, you have to create a context and remove it. Um, the 3D part provides uh, the visualization of 3D data sets, measuring of uh, the 3D objects, and 3D annotation, so that you can set annotation in a uh, three-dimensional context. You can have map catalog, as we said. Uh, before having this feature, you should have added into Genode the remote service, a remote layer, and then to be able to add it to a map, now you can uh, um, add this layer directly into the map. It will be saved in the blob uh, that configures the map, and such layers will not be visible in the, in the catalog. Can, uh, now you can, uh, another stuff that you can do inside the client uh, and will not be added in, uh, in Genode, that you can insert new files in the map without them be visible in the catalog. You can import data here. So you can upload uh, a GTIF vector layer and so on, and this will be only available in that map. Uh, we added uh, for the whole model um, an advertised uh, boolean so that you can have objects which are inside the catalog but are not returned by the API nor the CSW um, uh, queries. Uh, in this way, you can add minor resources that are only related to let's say a geostory, a dashboard, and so on, but are not visible for other purposes. This is it. Uh, okay. We have a few, uh, few time left, so. Uh, now the, we saw that there are many type of resources in Genode. Uh, now there is also a clear way to um, having to show in the catalog only the type of resource uh, you you want. Uh, we extended the user REST API in order to be able to uh, remove accounts. Uh, before it was not possible. When the user was, was in Geonode, it was not possible to remove it. So now there are also all the possibility to remove it. And uh, since the ownership of resources is uh, quite important, there are also options for moving the ownership of the resources uh, of the users that is going to be deleted to other, uh, uh, into other account. There are also some improvements in backup and restore. First, uh, it, it was a, an ancient feature which also copied part of the customization in order to be ported from one, uh, one instance to, to the other. Now the backup and restore is only related, strictly related to the data and not only to the um, customization of the, of the site. 
Uh, we improved also the check for the security in the library used uh, in Genode so that every time uh, a, a library has been compromised has some critical vulnerabilities, uh, all the involved person will be, um, will be notified about that. Then we had some major upgrades. Uh, important the, the patch for GeoServer Geo uh, and uh, we're, go we're going to split how the internal files are handled. Now the files are not an, have not a name, are only associated to resources. They will have their own uh, uh, or instance um, and will be handled as, uh, as objects. Also, it will be possible to upload uh, 3D tiles, uh, objects, that will be uh, catalogable objects inside Genode in order to be uh, shown in the map viewer. Uh, some, uh, we're going to change how the metadata uh, are handled. Uh, now the, the model uh, is uh, quite fixed and uh, it's uh, a bit tricky to extend the mechanism also in plugins. Uh, we're going to implement a way to have it much more dynamic. So classical recommendation, upgrade to new version because lately many uh, vulnerabilities have been, uh, have been dis discovered and uh, so Upgrading, it, upgrading the, the various the various software will be much more safe. That's it. Thank you. Okay, so we have about two minutes for questions. So, any questions for Emmanuel? Do you have harvesters for Stack API so you can uh, uh, load in Stack? Item collections. Uh, <laughs> can't answer you right now. I will. We will keep in touch, and I will tell you. <laughs>